Welcome to FreshMind.com. My name is Eric and this video is in response to a request made by one of our subscribers. They wanted to know how to control the speed of an object along a motion path. So what we're going to do is I created this scene here and we're going to animate this vehicle going along at a constant speed and then right here in this zone he's going to slow down and then at the end of the zone he's going to speed back up again. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is to create our animation path or our curve. So let's go to a top view. I'm going to go up to the create menu down to the CV curve tool. You can use EP curve tool if you want, whichever one you want to use. I'm going to use CV curve tool. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to press and hold down letter X so I can snap to my grid. And let's see, I'll just enter a point there. Maybe halfway to the center. I've already done this once so I kind of know how I want to do this. Now I could put all these points in one spot, it doesn't really matter. Alright, line us up in the middle. But I always kind of like to space stuff out. Hit enter. Alright, there is our curve. I'm going to go to a side view. And I'm going to select my vehicle here. And line that up with my curve. I'm just lining the center of my manipulator up with the curve. Now I'm going to shift select the curve. Lower this down. And if you're wondering how I'm doing that, uh, I've got the move tool selected. And I'm just pressing and holding down the shift button, pressing and holding down the middle mouse button, and then dragging the direction I want to move my vehicle. Alright, so there we go. Alright, next thing we need to do is attach our vehicle to the curve. So I'm going to make sure I've got my vehicle group selected. Shift select my curve. I'm going to go to the animation menu set. Go to my animate menu, down to motion pass. I'm going to go to attach to motion path. I'm going to open up the options box. I'm going to reset the settings. I'm going to use the start and end time. If you set it on a timer, then your animation for this curve is going to be the length of whatever your timer is set for. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move my animation up to 300 frames. And in my options up here, I'm going to use the start and end time. And I'm going to do an end frame of 240. So this animation is going to be 240 frames long. Parametric length, make sure that's unchecked. If you had that checked, then the speed of your vehicle will change along your curve depending on the placement of your vertices. But it's really tricky. It can just cause a headache and just be really annoying to uh, work with. So unless you really know what you're doing, well, if you did, you probably wouldn't be watching this video anyways. Um, the easiest way is just going to be just to leave that unchecked, and it's going to force it to use what's called parametric space instead of parametric length. All right, um, the front of my truck is pointing along the X direction, so I've got X selected. Uh, it's po the top of my vehicle is pointing in the Y, so I have Y selected. Everything else can stay it the same, and I'm just going to click Attach. Um, just for your information, if you attach your object to a curve and it's not lined up the way you need to, um, you don't need to redo and then try to reorient your vehicle or whatever it is and then reattach. Uh, just simply select your vehicle, open up your, or whatever you had selected when you attached, open up your attribute editor, you'll see motion path. Just click on your motion path uh, node tab up here. And right there's your front axis and your up axis, and uh, you can inverse if you need to. So, like my vehicle is pointing in X, let's say my vehicle is pointing the other direction, I could click on this inverse and it flips my vehicle around. Same thing if I inverse up, flips it upside down. So, just play with these until you get it lined up uh, the way you need to. Let's go ahead and play our animation. All right, our vehicle is traveling along, which is what we want it to do, but it's at a constant speed. The way we're going to change the speed of our vehicle is by using keyframes. All right, so we are going to, the simple way to do this is we're just going to move our vehicle to say about right there. Or actually, we don't want to do that. We want to move our time slider. So I'm just going to left click on my time slider and move it along to my vehicles right there. Open my channel box. Down here in the input nodes there's a motion path one. I'm just going to click on that to expand it and you'll see a U value. 
All right, what is that U value? That U value represents the point on this curve or the distance along this curve. And the easiest way to think of this is as percentage. So right now it's 0.4, so we're about 40% along on this curve. So if we were all the way at the end of our animation, 240, our vehicle is at 1 or 100%. If we go down to 0, the U value is 0. So that's what that represents. Um, as far as translate values, our vehicle along the X is, if you look up here, as I scrub forward on the timeline to the end, our translate X value is 90, or well at 91, um, but our U value is only 1. So it's just because they're just a little different. So when you look at this U value, the distance along our curve, just think of it as percentage. All right, um, let's go ahead and move our animation to our vehicles about right there. And we're going to key this U value in our channel box over here. So make sure the U value is selected, the words. Right click on it. And then I just click on where it says key selected. And that puts a keyframe. So now you can see there's a 100 right there. That's a keyframe we just entered. Now when we created our animation path, it automatically puts a keyframe over here. You can see the little dot where it says 1. And then over here where it says 240. Those are also keyframes. All right, so let's uh, select our vehicle again. Let's move our animation path. Oh, let's go ahead and oh, expand our man uh, motion path over here in our channel box. Let's go ahead and move our vehicle to the other side of our solo zone. And we're going to key the U value again. Key selected. So now we've got four keyframes. We've got one on key frame on frame one, frame 100, frame 141 and frame 240 and all of those are the U value is keyed alright so nothing's going to change we play our animation it's still going to go the same speed the way we're going to adjust the speed is using the graph editor now for those of you who are already somewhat familiar with the graph editor uh, please bear with me I'm going to be as explanatory as I can because I know a lot of people have a hard time understanding this all right, so just to recap, all we've done was created a curve, attached our vehicle to the curve uh, using the attached to motion path, and then we added two new keyframes in the center. All we did was with our, because we're uh, wanting to keyframe our vehicle, so with the vehicle selected, we're not keyframing our translate x value, we're keyframing where the vehicle is on the curve, so we're keyframing this u value over here. And all we're doing is just moving our time slider to our vehicle to where we want it to and just doing a keyframe. And now we're going to adjust the speed of our vehicle between those two keyframes right there. We need to open up our graph editor. So I'm going to go up to the Windows menu at the very top. I'm going to go down to Animation Editors and then over to Graph Editor. With well, the graph editor opened up, I'm going to make sure my vehicle is selected. Now, I've been keyframing the U value of my vehicle group. So I am actually have the group, my vehicle group selected. If I just select my vehicle and go up here in my graph editor to the view menu, go down to frame all, it's not going to show anything because I didn't key the, the vehicle's body. So let me select the vehicle's group. Another easy way is you can just open up your outliner and then you can just select it there. So there's my vehicle group. And now I can go to my graph editor under the view menu and frame all or frame selected either one it's not going to matter um, so there is our curve let me expand this 